In difficult times like these, let's remember, we're all in this together. Bleh! Just, I am so sick of hearing that. Tell me you're not sick of hearing that. The war is upon us. Who will emerge victorious in this epic showdown between the titans of the camera world? When the dust settles and the smoke clears, there will be only one. Sony or Canon? Let's talk about it. Hi there everyone, I'm the Tactical Traveler. I'm a straight shooter who tells it like I see it. So if you're easily triggered by someone who you disagree with, this may not be the right channel for you. However, if you value an honest opinion from a regular guy who actually buys the gear that he uses with his own money, then you should stick around and maybe hit that subscribe button down below. The first shots have been fired in what is shaping up to be a monumental battle for supremacy in the mirrorless camera market. Canon landed the first salvo with the announcement of the borderline unbelievable specifications of the Canon R5. The biggest questions that remain about the R5 are when will it be released and how much will it cost? That along with the speculation about Canon's famous cripple hammer and how it's going to strike this camera. I made a video about some of my thoughts on the R5 announcement that you can see right up here. If you... Well, the latest scuttlebutt around the R5 has been surrounding its suspected price. Many of the usual camera channels that talk about what's happening. They've all speculated that it would cost around the same as the 5D line of DSLR cameras, which would keep it under $4,000. Recently, several online camera retailers around the world have listed the R5 on their sites at prices well over $5,000, and this created a lot of hand-wringing from those who realized that they might not actually be able to afford this camera, and it set off all the Sony users who declared that I'm switching from Canon I'm gonna have my $2,000 A7, oh wait, it's how much for the R5? Ooh. I mean, Canon did state that the R5 will be a five series camera, which those cameras have always been released with around a $3,500 price tag. So it is a reasonable assumption that this camera will be priced similarly, but I don't think that's gonna actually be the case. In my opinion, this camera will definitely cost north of $4,000. I wouldn't be surprised if it was actually close to 5,000. I mean, the announcement specs put this camera very close, if not actually even a little bit better than the recent release of the 1DX Mark III, which at the time of recording this video cost $6,500. Now look, before everybody tells me the 1DX is a flash chip DSLR and the new R5 is going to be the 5 Series camera, I get it. If they were going to price the camera up at the same price range as the 1DX Mark III, they would have probably called it the R1. Yeah, 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 I get it. I know everyone's saying that. But everything that's been associated with this new RF mount and all these new line of mirrorless cameras from Canon have been priced much higher than all the previous DSLR lines when they came out. It's for that reason I really think that this camera is going to be higher than everyone's predicting. Perhaps the Canon Cripple Hammer actually won't strike any of the features in the R5. Maybe it's just going to smash your wallets with its price. Alright, alright. Enough about Canon for now. This leads me to Sony, who's been relatively quiet while Canon has been pounding its chest like a rabid silverback gorilla running around the jungle. Kind of begs the question, is Sony finished? Has their reign ended? Will we ever see the unicorn camera, aka the A7S 3 Or are they just playing possum, lying there hoping Canon leaves them alone like they were a little stinking dead animal so they can just scurry back off to their den when the coast is clear? Or... Are they perhaps lying in wait, looking for the right moment to strike like a vicious viper ready to inject its poison before squeezing the life out of its prey? The real truth? It's anyone's guess. And none of us actually know for sure what Sony's going to do. But based on what we've seen in the past, I just find it hard to believe that Sony's just going to pack up and just leave the camera game altogether and just not worry about anything. I mean, think about it. Remember when Canon announced the release of the G7X Mark III? the successor to their successful vlogging G7X Mark II. I mean, Sony immediately followed that up with releasing the RX100 Mark VII, and looking back now, it's hard to argue that Sony didn't win that little contest. Now, I don't know if that's gonna happen this time, but I am curious to see how Sony actually answers the R5. All the latest rumors are pointing to big Sony announcements happening in May and June, with a May announcement being for a new point-and-shoot camera called the ZV-1. Everything that I've seen says it looks like an RX100 uh, line of cameras, but it has a fully articulating screen that's 
kind of similar to what you find on Canon cameras. Big question for me is, will that screen be fully touch enabled? It also allegedly has a better grip than the RX100 camera, or the RX100 cameras. Uh, it's got a large video record button, so it tells me it's definitely geared toward vloggers. It's got an integrated ND filter, a 24 to 70, 1.8 to 2.8 aperture lens. And this continues to surprise me. Why do they clearly market a camera to a vlogger, but don't give them any wide angle lenses? I mean, I get it. 24 to 70 is a much more versatile lens for photography, but it's not really the ideal focal length for vlogging. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, a 16 to 35 would be much better. I mean, it's supposed, this camera is also supposed to have all of Sony's latest autofocus features like eye autofocus and all that stuff. This one touch bokeh feature I read about I me. Mean, what, what does that even mean? Is that like that fake blurry background you get with smartphones? <laughs> Forget it. It's got auto object detect. Okay, who cares? So it can track things. Camera's been doing that for a while. This camera's rumored to be announced on uh, May 26th. That's, that's what we're seeing. Everything's pointing to this announcement then. I'm not sure what kind of picture profiles or codecs we can expect from this camera, but I'm suspecting it'll probably be around the same as the RX100 line of cameras, so that's pretty good. Also, one thing that I noticed is absent in all the rumors. There's no mention of a mic jack in any of this leaked information. So if this camera's marketed to vloggers but doesn't have a mic jack on it, I mean, Sony's just stupid. Sorry if this triggers any of you Sony fanboys out there. There's just no other way to say it. It's just stupid. Rumor has it that we won't hear about a new Sony full-frame camera until sometime in June. The real question is, will it be the a7S III or the a7 IV? And how will the specs actually compare to the R5? I know a lot of rumor sites are saying that it's definitely going to be the a7S III, but I think that ship has sailed. My belief is it's going to be the a7 IV. It's time for a much bigger upgrade beyond an a7 III camera. If it does turn out to be the a7S III and the specs are not just mind-blowing and it's not even on the more ergonomic a7R4 chassis, I think this is just Sony essentially giving up and it's kind of foreshadowing, in my opinion, that Canon will be the new leader moving forward. However, if they deliver us an a7 IV with all the features we've been begging for all this time, I think they actually have a real shot at coming out on top with this. I made a video of what I think the minimum specs need to be included in the a7 IV. You can find that video right up here and take a look at it and tell me what you think. In short, I don't think Sony's next full-frame mirrorless camera needs to actually beat the Canon R5 specs on paper. I think to win this battle, they need to include upgrades and features that we consumers have been asking for. They've got to beat Canon to market, and they've got to have a more affordable price point, much like they did with the a7 III. They need to provide more value and features at a lower price than the competition. It's that simple, then they win. I think without a doubt, Sony's camera will definitely cost significantly less than the Canon R5. Despite all of this speculation, the real battle won't be won on spec sheets and rumor sites. No, victory will be determined when the camera gets into the actual hands of regular users like you and I. We will conclude who's the actual champion based on the images, the videos, and our user experience, and the overall value and satisfaction that we feel with the camera that we choose. So how do you think this contest will win? Who will be crowned the king? Let me know down below in the comments. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up before you leave and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Bye.